Watch your strats back with more single card discussions where we take a look at some of the individual cards that have impacted Yu-Gi-Oh throughout the years. Today's card, the longest lasting synchro in the game, Stardust Dragon. Stardust was first released in Duelist Genesis in August of 2008 alongside a print in the 2008 collectible tins. Notable reprints include Gold Series 3 and the 2010 collectible tins in 2010 and Premium Gold and Mega Packs 5Ds in 2014. It has seen no time on the ban list as of this video. A level 8 wind attribute dragon type synchro monster with 2500 attack and 2000 defense its effect reads during either player's turn when a card or effect is activated that would destroy a card or cards on the field you can tribute this card negate the activation and if you do destroy it during the end phase if this effect was activated during this turn and was not negated you can special summon this card from your graveyard stardust is a bit of a legacy card being the main character's ace monster in the 5d's anime and a staple synchro since synchros were first released outliving other notable synchros of its time such as Colossal Fighter and Ally of Justice Cataster. Its effect is simple and powerful and more persistent than it appears at first glance. When an effect is activated that would destroy a card or cards on the field, you can tribute Stardust to negate that card's activation and destroy it. Easy as that. Opponent plays Dark Hole against your board of Stardust and Colossal Fighter. Tribute Stardust and it'll be back on your field for next turn and Colossal won't go away either. You can even use it against a deck like Scraps or Yang Zing who like to destroy their own monsters to get their effects off, for example with monsters like Scrap Dragon or Yaz the evil of the Yang Zing. Stardust effect can even be used in the battle phase. For example, if an El Shadal construct battle a Stardust Dragon, Construct's effect to destroy a special summon monster would activate, and Stardust could tribute itself to negate and destroy the construct even at the start of the damage step. Its attack isn't too bad either. 2500 isn't unstoppable, but it certainly isn't something to laugh about when going against it on your first turn. Stardust also saw play thanks to the support trap Starlight Road, a trap that could negate any card that tried to destroy two or more cards at the same time, like Dark Hole or Heavy Storm and then summon a Stardust Dragon from your extra deck. Before the banning of Heavy Storm in 2013, in a time when mass destruction was more common and threatening to the game, most every deck would play a copy or two of Stardust and Starlight Road each to fend off opponents' cards from and stop potential OTKs. Another common strategy at the time was to use Heavy Storm or Dark Hole on yourself and chain your own Starlight Road to get a copy of Stardust on your field to help push for game or protect you at a later time. Granted, a Stardust special summon off Starlight Road couldn't revive itself due to the condition that Synchro Monsters not properly synchro summoned can't be revived from the graveyard or banished stone, the card gave players two destruction negations and a 25 feeder and saw play for a limited time. Stardust also has interesting interactions with effect negating cards as well. Stardust tributes itself as a cost and then negates inside the graveyard. This means that if a card says the effects of the face up monster on the field are negated, like skill drain or fiendish chain, that a Stardust can use its effect without worry. But if a card says its effects are negated until the end phase, like on effect veiler or breakthrough skill, that means regardless of where it is, Stardust's effect won't go off. The key here is in the wording. Stardust tributes itself to activate its effect, meaning if you try to chain something to it while it's on the field, you won't be able to. By the time you can chain it, it's already in the graveyard. The two most common ones that have this problem are the ones I said earlier, Breakthrough Skill and Effect Veiler. You can't chain them to Stardust effect because it tributes itself, but you can still use them to negate Stardust effect. Let's say you have a Dark Hole in hand and either an Effect Veiler in hand or a Breakthrough Skill already set, and the opponent has a Stardust Dragon on the field. To properly negate Stardust effect, you would have to activate Veiler or Breakthrough and then in a new chain activate dark hole because neither specify that the effects are negated on the field and say that the effects are just negated to the end phase stardust can try to use its effect to tribute itself but the effect negation lasts until the end phase rather than based on its location as is with cards like skill drain it's complicated but it's good to know overall stardust is a personal favorite and not just for me it stands as a very balanced monster in the game's history and has seen competitive play for the past eight years as of this video's making and presumably will for a long time to come as as long as there's destruction cards in game, there will be Stardust. And that's our look at single card discussions, Stardust Dragon. Stay tuned for our next video and feel free to suggest some cards to review or deck profiles to post. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on YGO Strats. Yu-Gi-Oh! Fun Fact of the Day, the monsters Winda, Priestess of Gusto, and Win, the Wind Charmer are actually sisters, and even have a pair of stuffed rabbits that make a pair. This has been YGO Strats with your Yu-Gi-Oh! Fun Fact of the Day.